my friend, Father Gary Brown, had a chance to go to Bogota, Co Colombia, last week for a wedding and a few days of visiting. And he said that it seemed to him that almost everywhere he went, he saw signs about and monuments to someone that they must have, at least most, must have considered a hero. The signs would say, Simon Bolivar, Libertado. For he had started a revolution that helped overturn the oppression system of his day, the domination of colonialism, and actually helped five nations move towards independence and freedom. Simon Bolivar, Libertado, he had set them free, but he did it with force. He must have been a brave man, but he killed many along the way. And killing is always its own form of oppression, both to the killed and to the killer. Enter Jesus. Jesus, too, saw the domination system of his day that kept a people oppressed. And it was, in ways, represented by the temple. Jesus was a part of the peasant class growing up, and the taxes that were extorted from the peasants were brutal. And when they made their way to Jerusalem for the Passover, on top of the taxes, when they wanted to make their offering, it didn't matter any animals that they brought for offering. They would never be good enough. They had to pay the high prices of these people who were selling them there at the temple. And they couldn't even use their own money to make the offering. It wasn't the right money, so they'd have to exchange the money. And again, they would get ripped off. And it really was part of an, a system of oppression that would keep a few in power and others in poverty. And Jesus saw what it was doing to the people he loved. And he knew that this temple, which could have been a source of freedom and dignity for so many, had turned into the exact opposite. So he searched his soul those days in the desert. He prayed about all that he saw when he was up in the mountains. He heard the stories of pain and sadness on the streets. And in his encounters with many, he gave them hope. And he tasted the despair that things would ever change when he ate meals with them. And so he began his journey to the temple. It took three years, maybe 33. And when he got to the temple, he began the revolution. He started turning tables over. He began his revolution, but he did it without killing anyone, but with the willingness to be himself killed, because the ones who had the most to lose by this turning of the tables were the ones in power. And power is always tempted to fight to keep its power. And the people who saw Jesus do this knew they had much to lose. And so, this Jesus must die. Jesus knew it would cost him. The death threats were immediate. But how brave he was that afternoon, huh? He cared so much about the poor and the vulnerable that he was brave enough to start a revolution, but again, not a revolution to kill others, but a revolution that might lead to himself being killed. 
in the history of his followers is replete with the stories of women and men and children who have themselves stood up to power and turned over the tables of domination, not to kill, but by their words, by their actions, and embracing a willingness to maybe even themselves be killed along the way. Like Sister Dorothy Stang, who fought for peasants' rights in the rainforest and was killed by the corporations whose tables she tried to turn over. Like the four nuns from America who were killed in, by the death squads in El Salvador, or the Jesuit priests who experienced the same fate for standing in solidarity with the peasants against the powers that would oppress them. Or like that woman named Rosa Park, who stood in the front of a bus and wouldn't go to the back, stood her ground, and received death threats for that. There are some reports that would suggest that every day there are 400 people martyred for their willingness to try to stand with others who are impoverished and help them be set free. People who would try to turn over the tables, who, who saw that there had to be something done and would do so at risk to their own life. Martyrs, in the words of George Bernard Shaw, are people who see things as they have never been and ask, why not? I'll repeat that. People who see things as they have never been and ask, why not? Their lives are testimonies to a world not yet imagined. And Jesus tried to taught his disciples to imagine a reign unlike anything they had ever seen, almost an anti-kingdom where masters serve the slaves, where the beggars are invited to the banquet. And what are we waiting for? There are systems of domination and oppression even now. And as followers of that man, Jesus, we too have to be people who see our men poor and victimized, our women battered or raped, our children abused aborted, are starving. And we got to do something, huh? And we do much to care for them and the immediacy of their needs. You know all the stuff we do to try to feed them and support them. But another part of our call is to also see the systems that would keep them at the bottom and to join Jesus in turning over the tables, even though it might cost us. And I hope and pray that it would never cost me my life or you yours. But if I am to belong to him, it's a risk that I am called to take. Simon Bolivar, Libertado. Father Gary said it was something to see those signs everywhere and the allegiance that so many people felt to this man that they thought had set them free. My brothers and sisters, we have someone altogether different. And in, in one level, in his humility and courage, even more powerful. Jesus Cristo, Libertador. So what am I to make of this? It's broken. I can see it's broken. Did you do it? What happened? 
he did that? It must have been an accident. Uh-uh. On purpose. He did it on purpose. Oh, I'm sorry. He's older than you, too, isn't he? Two years, yeah. And bigger. He's bigger than you, yeah. Oh, Big Ale, that's not very nice. I'm sorry when somebody's bigger than you. It's almost like he kind of bullied you, huh? So, Big Ale, what do we do at times like that? I know what. Clobber. Clobber. No, no, no. You know that, don't you? Yeah. And Big Ale, it's okay that you were angry because that was wrong. But this is one of those times where we use our words. You say what you need to say now. Don't put yourself in a situation where you could get hurt if you can help it. Maybe you could ask your teacher to help you or mom or something. It's hard. I know it's hard. And I'm sorry. But here's something, Big Al. You're bigger than some kids. I hope you would never do that to anyone, would you? No. Because if we're bigger, it's our job to help those who are smaller. You're right. And if we're richer, it's our job to help those who are poorer. Poorer, you're right. And if we're stronger, it's our job to help those who are weaker. You're right, Big Al. Like Jesus. Exactly like Jesus, Big Al. That's what he did. If we want to be like him, we'll do that too. What do you think, old buddy? Go the zoo. Bye. <laughs> um, boys and girls, if anybody bigger than you ever picks on you, I am so sorry. That's not right. But we pray for you, though that you would never be like that, but instead that you would always keep your eye out for those who get picked on and you help them, huh? Like Jesus.